We've got you covered on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Blow the whistle. Let's, Let's get, get home the right way. way. It's the Triple H Show on show News Talk, Talk 98.7. 98. Tony Parker, Commissioner of Corrections for the state of Tennessee, joins us on the Triple H Radio Experience. What a pleasure to meet you, sir. It's good to be here today. How long have you been in the corrections business? So... Uh, this year, in June, I will have been in corrections for uh, 37 years total. Uh, wow. Started when I was 19 in uh, rural West Tennessee uh, at the Lake County Regional Facility at that time, which is now Northwest Correctional Complex. And uh, I was fortunate enough to start my career as a correctional officer and work my way up through the ranks uh, in the security series. It's it, it's really hard to kind of understand what corrections is like if you haven't been at the, and for lack of a better way to say this, at the street level of your business? You know, uh, Howard, and I'll say this, it, it helps me in my job today as commissioner to have been there. Um, I, I, I tell people all the time, I think Corrections is one of the most misunderstood professions in state government. Uh, the work in corrections is, is very challenging. Uh, we have a, a very uh, important mission, but sometimes a very difficult mission. And I salute all the men and women who work in corrections, uh, whether it be at the state level, the local level, federal level. Uh, they have a very tough job uh, and a very tough mission, but it definitely helps. Uh, having been in the facility atmosphere, working, in the correctional environment, uh, it, it helps you to formulate policy and, and really understand the complexities of corrections. So, uh, Mr. Parker, do something for me. Just let's start at a very educational level for people who don't know the scope and scale of corrections uh, in the state of Tennessee. Tell me about corrections by the numbers. How many institutions? How many inmates? budget, the flow of inmates in and out, kind of kind of give me a primer on cor- uh, corrections in the state of Tennessee. Sure. So we have a total of 14 facilities, state prisons uh, in the state of Tennessee. Ten of those facilities are operated by the Tennessee Department of Corrections. Four of those facilities, we contract uh, those services out. Uh, Core Civic runs the uh, private side of corrections in Tennessee. Um, when you talk about numbers currently, about 22,000 people incarcerated in our facilities. We have another about uh, about 45 to 4,800 people in jail backup in our state, uh, in our jails, in our county jails across the, the state. Another 3,000 that serves in those jails uh, as locally sentenced defenders. Uh, the average cost per day, uh, that's a question I get asked all the time. What's it cost a day for an inmate uh, to be housed in a correctional facility in Tennessee? Somewhere around $79 to $80 a day. Uh, those numbers are important because when you look at a corrections budget of over a billion dollars, uh, I always tell people, you know, sending someone to a correctional environment inside of a facility is, uh, is very uh, costly. It costs taxpayers a lot of money to put someone in a in a prison bed in Tennessee. Uh, in community corrections, now, uh, the other thing, many times people think of corrections, they just think of prisons, but in the Tennessee Department of Corrections, we also supervise, uh, we have about 70, about 70,000, 75,000 people under community supervision on probation and parole that we're also responsible for. Now, here's the, here's the, the important piece there is the cost per day for someone on probation or parole, about 4 to $5 a day versus $80 a day inside of one of our facilities. So one of the things Governor Lee has pointed out, we have to be very smart about how we manage the population. We have cell beds that cost $80 a day that's there and should be there for the most violent offenders. And these people who... Are, are dangerous, are, are dangerous in our society. Uh, but we also have opportunities uh, for rehabilitation and for supervision and accountability at the local level in our communities for about 4 or $5 a day. So, you know, I, I was just, uh, I pulled out my calculator and I was just playing with the numbers. So what you're talking about is you have somebody under supervised parole, they're not in an institution, an $80 a day bed, 
um, that's two grand a year versus 30 grand a year. Exactly. That's, I mean, that's a $28,000 per inmate differential. It is. And, and that's, that's when you really put, when you look at the numbers, uh, it makes a lot of sense, right? Sense on both sides of the house there to make sure we get it right. Uh, one of the things that we do today in corrections that we didn't do 37 years ago, uh, the validated risk and needs assessment we use today really looks at what drives people to our front door in corrections. Is it, uh, Substance use issues. Is it mental illness? Uh, is it, people commit crimes. Now, don't get me wrong. They, they violate the law. That's why they come to us. But we're interested in looking at those core uh, issues that cause people, in many cases, uh, to violate the law. And what we have found is that a big percentage of the people that show up in our front door uh, in our diagnostic centers have a mental illness, uh, mental mental issue, or they have a substance use issue that we believe in many times drives from on. You're listening to Triple H from the Broken Financial Studio of News Talk 98.7. Um, you're listening to uh, Commissioner Tony Parker. By the way, he did not play for the Spurs. He will not be going to the <laughs> Hall of Fame in the NBA. He will be going to the Hall of Fame in corrections, but that's a few years down the road. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us on the radio, uh, Triple H radio experience. So that leaves me with uh, a hard question. So let me, let me gently approach the bench and, <laughs> and ask you a tough question. First of all, the governor has a real heart for Criminal justice reform really does. I mean, the math of it makes sense, right? $2,000, $30,000. You don't have to be an economist to understand the numbers there. That makes a lot of sense from a math perspective. There's the human perspective, though. Here's a person that has potential, that may have done something bad. They may have been driven to your front door through mental illness. I noticed the governor put more money in for mental illness at the middle school age level and pushing it down so we catch it earlier. Um, So you have the human part of this. Here's the deal. When you have corporations that are in the business of $80 a day, hospitals, hotels, correction facilities, they're making their projections on profit based on how many people are going to show up and how much the state is going to pay them per person. So if if they want those contracts, if they're lobbying for those contracts, if they're building their companies on people being incarcerated, isn't it kind of a tug of war to say, we got 22,000 people now, we're trying to move that uh, number down to, let's say, 15 and then down to 10. If you are a private corporation that houses them, don't you go, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. We can't build more prisons if you guys are doing stuff like that. Well, I think, you know, I've never worked on the private side of corrections. But one thing I do know is is that we have to be very careful about the how we manage the population inside of our facilities. So any private facility that we contract with, uh, they're required to have evidence-based programs, programs that promote rehabilitation, promote uh, people being able to leave and consistently lower recidivism. And that's our goal in Tennessee. Uh, we monitor those facilities very closely. But I'll also say there's a lot of opportunities, Helen, for on the front end before they come to us. One of the things you've heard Governor Lee talk about is his work with uh, Men of Valor and, and the, the work he's done, he did before he'd become a governor. There's opportunities um, for, on the front end, when these people are at the, the courts, to look for alternatives to incarceration. One of the things that the governor, we've got $4.6 million in our budget this year to look at day reporting centers. The day reporting centers is a new concept that really it's a true alternative to incarceration for that person who may have a mental illness or, or a serious substance use issue. The courts 
can divert that individual from a $80 a day bed, which if that's the case, they never show up in my facility or a core civic facility. They show up in a day reporting center in the community at about $40 a day versus $80 a day where they can receive uh, intensive substance use uh, uh rehab services that hopefully corrects that behavior, and they never end up in one of our facilities in the state. Just the return on investment for that type of program is huge. I mean, if we look at currently, we have 300 bed, uh, 300 slots in the state for that. This $4.6 million is going to almost let us double that, that those opportunities. We know in Knoxville alone, we have 50 beds there, and it's over capacity today because the courts are using that that resource uh, to divert people from ever coming to a hard bed at the beginning. I think that's that's where we need to look at for opportunities in the future. I, I think you guys are, are innovative in, in some great ways. Here's a, here's a question for you. By the way, uh, Tony Parker is our commissioner of corrections. Um, here's a, here's a, this is probably a more personal question, but I'm just curious. Guy like yourself that spent over three decades in corrections, how do you protect your heart from cynicism? How do, how do you, because you see people at the breaking point, at the bottom. Um, how do you protect your heart from cynicism? And how do you position yourself to, you're in a hard business, right? This is, this is no Disneyland. You're in a hard business, but you also have a governor that is in the business of hope. You are in the business of hope. Corrections, right? Absolutely. To correct a behavior means we're going to try to do something that is corrective, that puts you on a better path so you don't come back here. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking if I've been in that career and I've heard it all, I've seen it all, I've seen every game that a person could play, after a certain point, I think I get a little cynical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you protect your you heart know, from cynicism? That's a great observation. And it's, I, I would say this, our business in corrections is really a people business. You can never forget that. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're dealing with someone's son, uh, someone's grandson, someone's daughter. They, these people that are incarcerated have moms and dads and in some case siblings and, and, uh, their own children. Uh, Governor Lee, I was so I've been so impressed with him uh, even before he became governor in his uh, ability to see that corrections is truly a people business and it's an opportunity. It's one of the greatest opportunities we have in state government to make a positive change in people's lives. Now I'm talking about changing the destiny for someone and and never forgetting that. That person who is in your facility, and we have some very violent people in our facilities. Don't get me wrong. We do. But there's 55% of my population today uh, in our facilities are nonviolent offenders. And we have to look at what's the opportunity to invest in people as a department. And I truly believe most of the people who work in corrections today they understand our mission is really to enhance public safety. The way we enhance public safety is provide good evidence-based programs and opportunities for people to engage and make positive changes to return to society and be successful. And when they're successful, Tennessee is a safer place to live. It's a win-win. Do we always get it right? No, not not in every case. And we still have a lot of opportunity for growth, but you know, we, we can never forget to protect our heart against that cynicism. We have to remember that we're in a people business. And we also have to do, sometimes, do our own self-evaluation. Look, I, I grew up in West Tennessee. You know, all of us have made mistakes, you know. And, and as time goes along, you have to be very careful not to judge people. But uh, people ask me all the time, you know, do you know what this individual's in for? Or this it, Really, when you're working with people every day, just make sure you provide the opportunities for them to make a positive change in their own life and hopefully return to our communities and be a productive member of society. 
Great interview. Great, great, great interview. I couldn't, you know, if we were on the basketball court, uh, I think you just, I think you just put up about three threes. I, I think it's a 20 point, 11 rebound. Well, night. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm proud of the department. I'm proud of the people that work for the department. It is, it's very complex work. It's difficult work, but the men and women of the Tennessee Department of Corrections do a great job every day. They have a most difficult job. And, and as you said earlier, it's it's misunderstood in in many cases, um, but we're fortunate to work for a governor who believes in the same things we believe in. Uh, we're going to follow his leadership, and there'll be great opportunities in the years to come for TDOC to make some positive opportunities for people to change their life. I've had the opportunity to talk to a number of commissioners over the last day and change. It really does make sense to me why. Tennessee showed up as the number one best fiscally managed state in America. Um, folks like yourself, uh, I've, I've talked to you a lot and, uh, every one of you, uh, here's what my compliment is based on. It's one thing to know the numbers and know how to sell your department to the legislature so you get funded. That's, that's the blocking and tackling of whatever you're in. Yeah. It's another when you have a passion for what you do and there is a redemptive passion for it. Yes. Right. And I, and I sense that in you and I sense that in a lot of the commissioners I've talked to. So thank you for making, uh, making Tennessee proud. Thank you. So, so what we do is important, but why we do it is most important. And I thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Tony Parker on the Triple H Radio Experience, News Talk 98.7 WOKI. More in a moment. We've got you covered.